In today's world, running an application inside a container is becoming increasingly common. As per CNCF, more than half of organizations use containers in production and more than third plans to do so next year. It is likely that more and more applications will be running in containers in the future. In this video, we'll dive into some features of Linux networking, like namespaces, uh, virtual internet pairs and bridges, all to show you how containerization technologies like Docker and Kubernetes provide isolated environments for running applications. My name is Philip. Let's get started. First, let's introduce the concept of network namespaces. It's a feature of the Linux kernel that provides network isolation. Processes in different network namespaces have their own network interfaces, IP addresses, routing tables and firewall rules. Let's show a list of network interfaces on our VM. We can see loopback and three interfaces. I will create a new namespace called ns1 with ip netns add command. New namespace has been created. Let's list available namespaces with the netns ls command. I will run the shell within the ns1 namespace using netns exec command. It expects namespace name and the app. Let me show you what just happened. My bash shell is running within the ns1 namespace. Let's list the interfaces. Our shell has its own loopback interface and no other interfaces are present. Routing table is empty. There are no connected sockets. From the host, we can check all the processes of a certain namespace with the PITS option or identify which namespace a particular process belongs to with the identify option. We just need to provide the PID. Network namespace gives us complete network isolation. What if our application running within NS1 namespace would like to talk to a different application within a different namespace, let's say NS2. I will create a second namespace NS2 and run a different application in that namespace. Now we have two applications having their own isolated virtual network environments. In order to link them together, we need to create a virtual Ethernet pair, aka VETH pair. The two devices in a VTH pair are connected by a virtual link. Any packet that is sent on one device is immediately received on the other device. This is ideal for connecting different virtual networking components like bridges, obvious bridges, elixir containers, or namespaces together. In order to create a VETH pair, let's issue an IPLink add command. We should give a name to the first interface and then indicate it's a VTH type and define a peer interface. We did create two new interfaces, VETH1 and VETH2, that form a VTH pair. Now, we need to bring them up with the IPLink up command. Next, let's assign the VETH interface to NS1 namespace with IPLink set and assign VETH2 interface to NS2 namespace. What just happened is VETH1 and VTH2 disappeared from the list of our interfaces on the host and are now present in our NS1 namespace and NS2 namespace, basically linking them together. Let's quickly assign an IP address to VETH1 interface and bring the interface up. And also assign an IP from the same subnet to VETH2 interface and bring the interface up. Please note that VETH1 interface is in the NS1 namespace and VETH2 interface is in the NS2 namespace. Let's run a connectivity test. I'll go to NS1 and ping the interface in NS2. Works. Now, a quick speed test. All looks good. We successfully connected two applications running in their own isolated networking namespaces with a virtual Ethernet pair. What if we would like to connect three or more applications together or 
if you would like to access the host network or the internet. The easiest option that Docker is also using in its default mode is to create a bridge. On a high level, we'll set up a bridge on the host and add two virtual Ethernet pairs to that bridge. Thanks to that, every networking namespace can talk to another networking namespace by going through the bridge. Moreover, because the bridge is in the host network, we can talk between networking namespaces and host network. Let's start with a clean installation. First, we'll create a new bridge with the brctl command. Let's check if the bridge has been created. We should have a new interface present in the interface list. Yep, it's there. I will assign 10.0.0.1 IP to the bridge. That will be the IP address that the applications in the networking namespaces will be using to talk to the host. Now I'll bring the bridge interface up and check its status. Okay, the bridge one interface is there and has an IP address assigned. It's still in down state as it has no members. Let's create two namespaces, NS1 and NS2. Then create two virtual Ethernet pairs, VETH1 paired with VETH1 peer and also VETH2 paired with VTH2 peer. I'll bring those VTH peer interfaces up. Finally, let's check how our interface list looks like. Okay, we can see bridge one and two interface pairs. Let's assign VETH1 to NS1 namespace and assign VETH2 to NS2 namespace. I will now set up an IP address for VETH1 in the NS1 namespace with IP net NS exec, then NS1 to indicate the namespace and the regular IP address add command to set the IP. Let's bring VETH1 up. Mind that all network commands are prepended with IP net NS exec NS1 to indicate it refers to NS1 namespace. Let's check NS1 namespace network configuration. Looks good. I'm setting up an IP for VETH in NS2 namespace and bringing VETH2 interface up. Let's check NS2 namespace network configuration. Please mind that bridge interface as well as VTH interfaces belong to the same 10 24 network. At the moment, there is still no connectivity between bridge one and virtual ethernets. That's because the bridge interface is empty, does not bridge anything. VETH interface is inside NS1 namespace. VETH2 interface is in NS2 namespace. VETH1 peer and VETH2 peer are in the host network. Let's add the VETH1 peer and VETH2 peer interfaces to the bridge with the brctl add if command. Finally, let's check our bridge configuration. We can see both interfaces in the bridge. Let's try connecting from an application running in the NS1 namespace to an application running in NS2 namespace. Notice that those two namespaces are no longer directly connected but the traffic goes via bridge one that combines the traffic together. To prove that, let's run a TCP dump on the bridge. By going via bridge in the host network, we gain two additional things. First, we can reach services in the host network. Let me go to NS1 namespace and connect to SSH service on the host. It works. Another thing we can do is to access the internet from our isolated namespace. I'm in the NS1 namespace. I will add a default route that points to the bridge. Now let's try pinging Google DNS. It does not work, but is to be expected. We need to enable packet forwarding on the host. I will go to cctlconf and uncomment IPv4 forwarding. Let me apply the changes with cctl-p. Last thing to do is enable NAT on the outgoing interface on the host. I have an NF table configuration file. We'll attach on the post routing hook and add all the traffic going out on ETH. That is our public interface. 
Now let's load the configuration. Let's check if the NAT is in place. Let's run a connection test from our NS1 namespace. It works. Moreover, we see the NAT counters are increasing on the firewall. Finally, let's redirect to a port from a host network to an app running inside a network namespace. I will run the simple HTTP server within NS1 namespace. We can enter the same networking namespace as the running process with NS enter command. Let me grab the PID of our process and enter the same networking namespace. You need to provide the PID of the process and dash N to indicate we want to get inside the networking namespace. We can check if our HTTP server is indeed listening with SS command. We should be able to reach that server from the host network. What if someone would like to access our HTTP server running in its own isolated networking namespace from the internet? The traffic will arrive on the ETH0, that is public interface, and we need to direct it to our 10.x network. We just need to configure destination NAT, so that if someone sends traffic to our public interface to a specific port, it will be directed to port 8080 in our application. Packet forwarding is already enabled. Only thing we need to do is set up an FTable firewall to perform DNAT. We'll attach on the pre-routing hook, and for everything that arrives on public interface that is ETH0 to port 8080, we'll NAT it to our 10.0.0.2. Now let's load the setup and check if it's there. Let's run a connection test from outside of the host. Works. We did connect from the outside and the request was forwarded to our application running inside its own networking namespace. Networking namespaces, virtual Ethernet pairs, bridges are fundamental building blocks for containerization. Allowing for resource isolation and process separation in a more efficient and lightweight manner compared to traditional virtualization. Please note that using namespaces and VTH pairs directly can be quite low level and is typically done by container runtime libraries or tools. So it's not something most users will need to do manually, but in my opinion, it's crucial to understand this concept. In my next video, I will show you how a real Docker containers communicate with each other.